two videos. We have completed the A part of this chapter, force work part, work, energy and power. Okay, now I'll just mark and give what all are important in this chapter. Take page 20. First this one, this is the definition. Define work done. What is work done? Okay, and then formula is given here. W is F into S. That's the formula. Then next thing is the derivation. Work done by a force when displacement is not along the force. That will be the question. So you'll draw the diagram and show this derivation. And the conclusion will be, so work done formula will become F into S into cos theta. Okay, this part I told you to cut. Then come here. Here you have factors affecting work done. Factors affecting work done. Now the special cases, we come to the special cases. These are very important. Definitely one question comes from this. Okay, the first case, if displacement is in the direction of force, that is theta is equal to 0, then cos 0 is equal to 1. So your formula becomes W is equal to F into S. Now the work done is positive. It can also be called maximum. So the question can be when is work done said to be maximum? So the answer will be when the displacement is in the direction of force. That is theta is 0 and all this you have to write. Or they can ask you when is work done said to be positive. The other important thing in this is example. So three examples are given. In each of this, directly the um, statement of the example and then the explanation why you say it is positive. Okay. So statement here is in free fall of a body of mass m under gravity through a height h. So till this is the example and then rest of the part gives the explanation why you call it positive work. Same way, a coolie does work on the load when he raises it up against the force of gravity. That's your example and the rest of it is explanation. Same way, if a body revolves in a circular path under the influence of a force and completing one round, again it's a positive work, explanation is given here. So, either they can ask you examples or they can ask you give you an example and ask whether the work was positive or negative. Okay. Now we go to the next case, case 2. Come to the second case, case 2. If displacement is normal to the direction of force. If displacement is normal to the direction of force, your theta will be 90 degree. So cos 90 is 0. So work done is 0. Okay. Work done is 0. Then, examples as usual, when a coolie walks on a horizontal uh, ground while carrying a load on his head, no work is done against gravity. That's an example followed by the explanation. When a body moves in a circular path in a horizontal plane, no work is done. That's an example and then the explanation follows. The next thing is, give two conditions. This is an important two mark question. Important two mark question. Give two conditions for the work done by a force to be zero. One is when there is no displacement. The other one is the case two, when displacement is normal to the direction of force. Then come to case three. If the displacement is in the direction of force, that is theta is 180 degree, then cos 180 is zero, your formula becomes minus F into S. So work done is negative. Okay. This, again example, when a body moves in a, on a horizontal surface, work done by the force of friction is negative. So this is the example. When a body moves on a surface, work done by the force of friction is negative. The second example, when a ball of mass and thrown, thrown upwards to a height h. That's the example followed by the explanation. So as I told you the other day, you don't have to do this. Okay, next topic will be work done by force of gravity. So, work done by the force of gravity is W is equal to mgh. Now, there is an important conclusion here. Work done by the force of gravity is same whether the body comes down from a certain height using a stairs or a slope or a lift. So, this keeps coming in reasoning question. What does it mean? A ball is coming down 
there are three possible options okay one it's coming down straight the other one it is coming through a inclined plane and reaching here and the third case it's coming through a staircase so the question is in all the three cases what's the work done from top it's coming here so it looks as if in these two cases it has traveled a lot of distance but work done by the force of gravity will be the same in all these three cases because you have to only consider the vertical height between the starting and final position which will be the same okay so work done will be mg h what about the path it takes the work done formula will be mg h that's an important conclusion that keeps coming in reasoning question then if a body is going up then work done will be minus mg h okay then you have the definition of one joule define one joule so this this is a definition define one erg then relationship between joule and erg this derivation also comes for two marks sometimes then come to par this is the definition of par and this is the formula for par and then in the next page you have another formula for par that is p is equal to force into velocity average speed if a body is moving with a particular velocity par can be written as force into average speed you will have numericals based on this also then coming to unit of par define one watt okay define one watt so that's this definition then you should know the bigger units kilowatt megawatt gigawatt smaller units milliwatt and microwatt and then the special units are very important one is horsepower it is used in mechanical engineering and one horsepower is equal to 746 watt this conversion is also important next is energy so the definition will be energy is the capacity to do work then coming to units of energy again you have some special units for some specific forms of energy okay general unit is sa unit is joule cgs unit is erg and one joule is 10 pascal erg now coming to specific units the bigger units of energy are watt hour and kilowatt hour so you can write here mainly used in paying electricity bill paying electricity bill these units are used when we pay electricity bill watt hour and kilowatt hour now what do you mean by watt hour now where do you get this as a unit of energy power is equal to energy upon time so energy is equal to power into time this could also be a formula for based on this i get this unit watt hour and kilowatt hour so 1 watt hour is equal to 3.6 kilojoule you should know this 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 megajoule you should know these two values also then the next one is heat energy is usually measured in a special unit called calorie and what is 1 calorie you can just write 4.2 joule that is also correct okay 1 calorie is 4.2 joule coming to the next one electron volt energy of atomic particles is very small it is measured in electron volt this came in this year board exam also what is the unit used to measure the energy of atomic particles that is electron volt also they had asked give the relationship or give the value of that unit with respect to the si unit of work done so 1 ev is equal to 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 joule so as a two mark question Okay, so anything can be asked. So you should know the unit and the conversions also. So that's all about the theory questions, theory of this chapter. Now come to the B part. This you did long back. Different forms of energy. But I thought I'll just mark whatever is to be studied in this. Now you can start straight away with page thirty. gravitational potential energy 
ओके ग्रेविटेशनल पोटेंशियल एनर्जी फॉर्मूला यू इज इक्वल टू एम जी हेच देन देर इज अनदर वन कॉल इफ अ बॉडी इज मूविंग फ्रॉम हाइट हेच वन ओके हेच वन इज अ स्मॉलर हाइट एंड इट हेज टू गो टू अ हाइट हेच टू फ्रॉम हियर टू हियर अ बॉडी हैज टू गो फ्रॉम हियर टू हियर दिस इज हाइट हेच वन दिस इज हाइट हेच टू so when it is going from this to this there is a gain in potential energy so how will you find that gain in potential energy is equal to you get this expression mg h2 minus h1 okay then kinetic energy its formula half mv square then there is another one important thing relationship between kinetic energy and momentum so this is asked as reasoning question okay so momentum you remember last year you studied it is m into v okay momentum is m into v just now you saw kinetic energy is half m v square okay now from this i can write v is equal to p by m so in kinetic energy in place of v i write p by m the whole square so i'll have half into m into p square by m square so this m and m will get cut so i'll have kinetic energy is equal to p square by 2m so this is the relationship so kinetic energy in terms of momentum or they can ask you the other formula momentum in terms of kinetic energy so what will happen this p square is equal to 2m k and p will be square root of 2m k so these two formulas are given here and you will have reasoning questions based on that reasoning questions based on that mainly in the first case in this case kinetic energy is inversely proportional to mass if momentum is constant in this case momentum is directly proportional to mass when kinetic energy is constant so if you see question number 12 and 13 of your exercise 12 and 13 they are based on this now the next thing is work energy theorem this is just the statement you should know according to work energy theorem work done by a force on a moving body is equal to increase in its kinetic energy so work done is equal to half m v square minus half m u square change increase in kinetic energy so this is when a body changes its velocity so next you can go straight to conversion of energy so in this the question that usually is asked is energy conversions that are given here these are some examples the question can be like what is the energy conversion in a dynamo so you have to write mechanical to electrical motor electrical to mechanical or they can ask the other way give an example of an appliance in which mechanical energy is converted to electrical energy so you will write dynamo so you should memorize all this you should know all these apart from this also there are some given in this two pages you can mark them also so here you have about steam engine and then you have about burning of fuel okay again steam engine explosion of crackers lighting of candle and respiration lighting of candle then respiration so what are the energy changes in all this also you can see this is not there in that diagram then you have electromagnet energy change in electromagnet is electrical to magnetic nuclear reactor nuclear energy to electrical energy then this is water falling from a height potential to kinetic and then uh, moving parts get heated due to friction this is mechanical to heat energy okay so this is what you have to study in a and b part and the numericals based on kinetic energy and potential energy okay children now i'm going to solve some 
tough numericals that are given in page number 29. Okay, turn to page 29, numerical number 8, 10 and 14. Okay, we'll start with the 8th one. A pump is used to lift 500 kg of water. So, mass is 500 kg from a depth of 80 meter. So, that's the height that is 80 meter and then time 10 seconds. So, what you all you have to calculate? Work done by the pump. So, this is working against gravity. So, you will be using the formula work done is m into g into h 500 into g. They have told you to take 10. So, you can take 10 into height is 80. So, 5 eighths of 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 zeros. So, it is like 4 lakh joule. Okay. B part. You have to find the power at which the pump works. So, formula for power is work done upon time. So, our work done is 4 lakh joule followed by time is 10 seconds upon 10 seconds. So, you cut these two. You will have 40,000 watt. Unit will be 40,000 watt because it is power. Okay. Now, we go to the C part. The power rating of the pump, if its efficiency is 14%. Okay. Now, first of all, you should know what is efficiency. Efficiency, when we say about efficiency, it is the ratio of, it is given here, useful power upon input. Or you can just take output power upon input power. Okay. Now, Power rating means they are asking you the input power. Remember that. Input power they are asking. And the power that you have found here, that is the output power. So, efficiency is 80%. So, it will be like 80 by 100. And our output power is 40,000 watt. Upon input power we have to find. So, input power will be 40,000 upon 80 into 100. 5 eighths of 40, so 500. So you will. Sorry, children, I made a mistake. This is 40%, not 80%. It's given as 40%. So 40 by 100. So your input power will become. Input power will be 40,000 divided by 40 into 100. Okay, this came down, 100 went up. So, if I cut this, it will be 1000 into 100, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1 lakh watt. So, to get 40,000 watt output, you have to give 1 lakh watt input. So, that is called power rating. This is what you were asked to find. Okay. Now coming to numerical number 10. It is easy. That is based on this formula. Power is equal to force into velocity. Okay. So force is given. Power is given. Convert kilowatt into watt. Okay. It will become 40,000 watt. And then solve this numerical. Then come to the 14th question. This type of question is repeated very often okay so two cases they'll give you then they'll tell you to compare their work done and power okay so a boy weighing 40 kg f so a boy and a girl there are two cases boys bo weight the weight of the boy is 40 kg f so i can write mass as 40 kg climbs up a stair of 30 steps number of steps is 30 each 20 centimeter high. So, what the height will be? 30 into 20. That will be in centimeter. That is 600 centimeter. Or I convert it into meter. 600 upon 100. That is 6 meter. So, that is my height. Okay. Height is 6 meter. And he is doing it. She is doing it. 
he is doing it in a time 4 minutes so time taken by him is 4 minutes come to the girl her weight is 30 kg of mass is 30 kg so does the same means she is also traveling through the same height so height will be 6 meter does the same means height is the same time is 3 minutes now they have asked you to compare work done and par ok so we will start with the first thing what will be the work done by the boy mgh ok so 40 into 6 no g they would have it's ok you can take it g anything because it's going to be compare so you can they will both get cut ok h is 6 meter so in this case work done will be 30 into g into 6 now when you compare work done by the boy upon work done work done by the girl is equal to 40 into g into 6 upon 30 into g into 6 these two will get cut so answer will be 4 is to 3 so ratio of work done is 4 is to 3 now then you have to find the ratio of par so par of the boy will be work done upon time so 40 into g into 6 upon time is 4 minutes you can keep it in minutes because again you will be comparing so they will get cut and then power of the girl is 30 into g into 6 by 3 minutes now we have to find the ratio or the compare means you have to find the ratio p of boy upon p of girl is equal to 40 into g into 6 upon 4 divided by 30 into g into 6 upon 3. So, so 40 into g into 6 by 4 into 3 by 30 into g into 6. So, g, g cut, 6, 6 cut, 0, 0 cut, this 4 and 4 cut, 3 and 3 cut. So, your answer will be 1 is to 1. So, the ratio of power is 1 is to 1. Ratio of work done is 4 is to 3. These numericals at the last like 13, 14, 15, they are all comparing work done and power. These are very important questions which comes very often. Now, the coming Tuesday, that's 5th May, you will be having a test of A and B part. The part that I discussed today, you are going to have a test of that. Please prepare thoroughly. You need not prepare numericals of B part. A part theory, A part numericals and B part only theory. Thank you.